What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel and Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays, Happy Hanukkah, Merry Chrysler. It's Christmas Eve. If you're watching this Sunday morning, this episode's going live on Christmas Eve 2023. I hope you're all with your families, but also have a little bit of time to be joining us here this morning. So we are back on the Mercedes W210, my daily driver. The last time you saw this car, we did the air suspension management, we did the wiring, and we've got our custom air management setup in the trunk of the W210, leaving us with a good amount of trunk space. We've still got the factory OEM CD changer, manifold, and compressor on this side. The lines aren't tidy yet. We haven't actually plumbed the car yet. So these were just placeholders to kind of see where the airlines were gonna go. And we got the factory full-size spare and jack and tool kit underneath the floor here. So we've been able to retain all of that for a good daily driver having a spare on board. So today is the day where we start tearing this thing apart. We're gonna pull the suspension out. We're gonna pull control arms out. A huge thanks to Bag Riders, Commonwealth, ECS Tuning, and even Rova Motor Oil uh, for being a part of this project. Real excited to have these guys on board. Commonwealth up in Canada supplied us with the actual bracket kit, rear adjustable control arms, and front bag bracket kit, which we'll be utilizing on this car. We got new OEM front lower control arms from ECS. Uh, the inner bushings on these ones are shot, causing a little bit of play when you're driving. You can feel it in the front end a little loose. So we've got new lower control arms. We have new OEM ball joints from ECS tuning. Although Commonwealth makes a bolt-in bracket kit for the 190s, the R129s, the 124s, and the 210 chassis, he actually scratch builds chassis. Like it's an actual like chassis shop. Like if you've got a square body Chevy you need a chassis for, he does scratch build chassis. So check out Commonwealth Chassis Works on Instagram or his website if you guys need anything from him. Uh, even if you're trying to bag a car like this, uh, one of the Mercedes platforms, they're basically a bolt-in kit. You really don't need to do much. Commonwealth is your plug for a bolt-in air suspension kit. Bag Riders is your plug for anything management that you guys need. Also, while we're in the process of talking about some of our amazing partners, huge shout out to James and everyone at Auto Finesse in England for sending over this insane care package. Sent us their carrier duffel bag. Every product they carry, it seems like. All of their microfibers, their glass cleaning cloths, applicator pads, their waxes, all of their detailing products. We just have so much stuff from them. We get their five gallon bucket, all of their spray bottles, all the spray applicators for some of these bottles. Hoodies, t-shirt, huge shout out to Auto Finesse. We're really, really stoked to be a part of the Auto Finesse family here in the shop and can't wait to do more with those guys this upcoming year. Next year, technically, 2024, we've got a lot on the list. We're really excited to see these guys again in Europe. It's honestly a dream to be working with some of these companies. So I just, I wanna give back and promote them as much as I can. So it's, it's pretty incredible to have some of these companies on board with some of the peanut gallery cars I like working on here in the shop. All right, so here's what we have. Oh, that tab got bent. <laughs> So this is what we're dealing with here. We've got the Commonwealth kit, lower control arm, bracket kit, front control arm, bracket kit, and full front lower control arms themselves. OEM ball joints from Germany. And I even bought new lug bolts. Going with black. Gonna roll the dice on how good black's gonna look on an Obsidian Black 210 and the BC Forged wheels have black hardware. So I think that'll be a cool contrast where it'll kind of have like layers of black leading up to the car. Now we'll start taking things apart, getting the suspension out. I am eager to pull the springs out and set the car down on the wheels with the stock shocks in it. Cause that's, if you guys know what we're doing here, you'll notice that we don't have shortened shocks yet. Um, and especially with the 190s and the 124 platform cars, if you're trying to go as low as possible, you have to run shorter shocks. We got a huge announcement coming here pretty soon. We're gonna be working with a company in the shock department. So we have yet to kind of put together some shock applications for this car. But if for right now, we can sit on the sidewall of the tires or the actual lip of the wheels and get away with the range of motion with the OEM shocks, just gonna leave the OEM shocks in for right now. And then maybe do a later episode where we put custom shocks in with better dampening and the whole car handles a lot better. All right, well, we got the belly pans off so we could gain access to the front lower control arm bolts. 
we've loosened those up so they'll have better range of motion and turn freely as we set the car down. Tie rod ends separated, sway bar end links separated. So we're gonna set the car down. Since I don't have a screw hoist, a screw jack hoist, it's been on the list. We're gonna set the car down and use our floor jacks to relieve that tension to get the bolts out and then also use the floor jacks to lower the control arms enough to where we can pry the springs out. The ball joint has a taper to the knuckle and a taper to the control arm. All right, so old ball joint's out. Now we'll drop the jack down and try to get that spring out. Yeah, see how much tension it's under. <laughs> oh, I love it. It's easier than the old ones. The old ones you have to like, yep. So that was, could not have been easier. Just lowered the jack down nice and easy. And Corey just pulled the spring right out. We didn't have to use a pry bar or anything. I like it. All right, so front springs are out. So what we want to do now is get the rear springs out. I really don't want to remove the sway bar if I don't have to. I really want to keep and retain the stock ride quality and uh, ride control that the car already has from the factory because it rides amazing. Going air suspension, I do not want to take a step back on ride quality or drivability. I know we talk all the time about Southern cars and being from the Northeast, but if this were a Northeast car with 200,000 miles, that nut would not exist. Nope, nope, it wouldn't. But that is brand new. 200,000 miles brand new. <laughs> I know. How but... crazy. God bless the South. <laughs> Seriously. Man. In the Southwest and anywhere else that doesn't salt the roads in the winter. So a lot of you guys already know, we are a couple of New Hampshire boys and we are New Hampshire Volkswagen boys. So the amount of Mark 1s and Mark 2s we've both worked on over the course of our lives, normally you have to break the torch out to simply do coilovers in a car. Uh, so we're gonna take a moment here and admire a garaged Georgia car uh, that was maintained at a Mercedes dealership. The zinc plating still on all the hardware is insane. I mean, and just look at like the bolt on the subframe in the back here. I mean, it's just so crazy. The outer lower control arm bolt was fighting us to death. Well, we get that thing out. Easy enough. <laughs> All right, so we've got the factory control arms out and we're just kind of dialing in the lengths since the inner mount is a, an adjustable heim joint with a jam nut. So I'm gonna bring these out a little bit more and just get them within OEM specs. And then if, if it comes to pass that we can dial in the wheel fitment just a little bit with just this adjustment, we'll do that. All right, so the Commonwealth rear lower control arms are in, utilizes new hardware that he sends with the kits, uh, Allen bolt hardware, which looks great. You utilize your OEM bolt on the inner lower control arm mount, but for now we've got everything bolted in, just fingered tight. Shock and sway bar mounts are bolted in. And yeah, we're gonna put the wheels on, we'll set this thing down. I'm really hoping the OEM shocks give us enough travel to set this thing where we wanna set it when it's aired out. That'd be great. That's on that's, stock shock. That stock shock is fine, dude. dude look Holy at the, shit. Look at the fitment. Man. Oh my god. I don't think we have to do anything in the rear. Five mil spacer, if anything. Tighten it up, yeah. All right. Uh, these wheel specs were almost completely perfect on this car. This thing looks so good already on just a preliminary, like, set down. And this. The stock shocks get it to almost exactly where I'd want it aired out anyway. I want to space the rear just a little bit to make it a little bit more comparable to the front fitment. And at that point, we'd be sitting on the sidewall of the tire a little bit anyway, which means we could get away with a little bit higher of a, an air out height. But look at the fitment on the front too. I mean, it's, it's just about flush. 
It's crazy what suspension and wheels can do to a car. The black hardware, the black lug nuts on the black car is chef's kiss. Yeah, I think this was the move. But because the wheels have black hardware and it's going on a black car, definitely love that. Man, it looks so good. All right, so we're putting the new lower, the front lower control arms in. So the bushings in the old control arms are the culprit of a lot of the play in the front end that you could feel when you were driving it too. So um, instead of buying the bushings and fiddling with trying to get them out of this, and I got the OEM ball joints. So we're replacing all of that. The front end should feel super tight now. New ball joints, new control arms, bushings all around. All right, so new front control arms are on. We're gonna be plumbing the car now. Gonna be running some airline. Trying to come up with a plan for routing from the front to the back. Uh, Corey's in the back right now, getting things sorted out for how we're gonna get out of the trunk, down under the car, and away from all moving parts, by the way, uh, with up and down range of motion. You know, you gotta make sure you stay away from axles, drive shafts, control arms that might be moving, sway bar that might be moving. When it airs down, you don't want it to pinch an airline or something like that. All right, guys, it's the next day and we've run airlines. When we get the car up in the air, I'll show you guys the routing we did. This thing was the most satisfying car to run airlines in. We've got everything set up in the trunk now. Everything's nice and tidy. Uh, all the airlines are in the manifold. I might at some point make like a CNC cut line guide to like mount to this so all the lines are symmetrical to each other and away from the heat of the compressor. I think we're gonna be fine. I mean, this is DOT rated airline. This stuff can withstand pretty good heat. We're gonna roll the fenders. Andy brought his fender roller. There's a lot of dirt in, this, in these wheel wells. So we'll clean that up a little bit and we'll roll it. I bought some free floating spacers for the rear for just mock-up purposes to see what size spacer I'm gonna want. I think I got eight mils, like five sixteenths, and might want like a 10 mil possibly at the end because I, I want it to sit pretty comparable to the front. So once we start rolling some fenders, we'll know exactly what we need for spacing. So now that the rear's done, we're working on the front, getting the upper and lower bag brackets ready to go. Got the brand new control arms in, brand new ball joints. But take a look at how amazing it is to run airline in a W210. So these are the fuel line and brake line guides here. And right here in the middle, in this rubber piece, were two open holes in every single one. And we were able to run the airline down from the firewall along the frame rail and through every single one of these guides. Like it's OEM. And then here, I kind of zip tied them here because it helped alleviate the bend up to this guide. And then up and over through this guide crazy and then was able to even fit it through two of the factory guides above the subframe above the diff and then out behind the diff in through a grommet right here i bet the 210 amg has factory air that probably uses those same exact holes makes sense yeah. or or maybe the formatic does the formatic have air it does yeah. the wagon yeah, yeah, i had had wagon. air yep. wagon does yeah yep so i bet that's what those are for this is the commonwealth bracket that sits on top of the control arm. The bag mounts to the bracket, and then there's a long stud with a washer that goes up underneath that holds it underneath the hole of the control arm. All right, well, we've got fuses in all the harnesses. I've got a fitting made up to put air in the tank with the shop compressor, so the compressor on board the car doesn't have to drain the battery to fill this thing from zero. We've got the onboard air right here. We'll be able to put some air in the tank. All right, so we're gonna turn the car on for the first time, see if the management turns on. All right, so key on. We got power to the controller. So some of you guys may remember, I used the feel air system in the Porsche 924S, 
And that was my first go around with Feel Air as opposed to the Airlift 3P and 3H system. And you've got all, all up, all down, and then your sides. And you have to highlight front and rear. So when they're red, that'll be both. So right now, only the front will go. If I click it again, it's white. If I click just rear and rear is red, these will be left and right for rear sides and both rear, both rear down. If I highlight both in their front and rear all red, that means all up, all down, and then left side, front and rear up, right side, front and rear down. So it's pretty simple. And if you're unfamiliar with air suspension, these are the four corners of your car in the PSI readings. So Corey's underneath tightening the control arms. We have it set down on block so we can still get underneath it. And we're tightening the control arms up at what would ballpark be ride height uh, just to tighten those bushings up at that height. And we did roll the fenders. We got in there kind of like an old school heat, used the heat gun, heated the paint up, kind of tapped it in. But yeah, this is gonna look great. We haven't seen it down off the lift yet. So we're just finishing tightening a few things. Everything's tight, plastic belly pans are back up and it's currently sitting a little above ride height, like above where I'll probably drive it at. And it already looks so mean on these wheels. Yeah, this is definitely the move. It's clear that there's some toe in already. I'd imagine it's gonna toe in even more when we go down further. Uh, but we just ordered pizza. It's dark out, so we can't get any clips in the daylight right now. We're gonna do that tomorrow. We're about to air it down for the first time off the lift. It's on all four wheels under its own weight and holding pressure at all four corners. This is a good quick look, just at least in the shop at not quite full height. The front will go up more, the rear will go up a little bit more. But yeah, let's air this thing down. Boy, I don't know. We, it's real tight to the, the sidewall, but we might be maxed out on the stock shock. Yeah. Dude, the fit in a front on this side though. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah. <laughs> Freaking daily, dude. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, next morning we did a toe plate alignment on it just to get the toe in corrected down at the end of the driveway, seeing it out of the shop in the street is just so sick. This thing, I think I like this thing at ride height more than I do aired out. <laughs> All right, about to go for the first drive. Backing plates are rubbing on the rotors a little bit just from all of our prying and moving around of things. It is filthy right now and it's too cold to wash the car. It's honestly below freezing right now in Chattanooga. First coffee run, filthy. I guess. It's good though. <laughs> it's so good. The wheels are clean. That's all that matters. It, yeah, dang, this thing looks so good. The staggered wheel setup is perfect. Man, yes, good daily, yes. yes. <laughs> all right, so aside from the backing plates rubbing on the rotors on both front wheels, I really like the ride quality. So this is always hit or miss when you take a car that already rides really well from the factory, like a Mercedes, and change the suspension, and especially doing air suspension with new control arms and bushings and all that, you never know if you're gonna take away any ride quality or stay about the same. And already just being like a half mile down the street, I feel like it's pretty comparable, which, which I'm happy with. Well guys, this is the W210 on air on the BCs. 
Dude, it looks so good rolling. <laughs> so good. <laughs> it's perfect. I can't believe those wheels fell into your lap and they're just perfect for the car. We were at BC and yeah, we're just talking about the car and the wheels and Dan was like, I got these wheels out back. They're just sitting on the shelf. And I actually thought about not buying them. I, I can't believe, because this, it just looks so good. In the rolling shots, I mean, and to be honest, I left the, the rear aired up just a little bit. We're pretty certain it's the shocks. When the front stock shocks bottom out, it leaves just a little bit of gap here. So with a shorter shock, we could totally sit down on the lip. And the rear will basically do that with the stock shocks, but leaving it comparable distance from the lip to the fender, I think is just the best look for the car. So huge thanks to Commonwealth for supplying the control arm kit, the bracket kit. This was an easy install and we didn't have to make any modifications to it at all. So huge thanks to Commonwealth for being a part of this project, bag riders as well, and ECS tuning for helping us get all the parts we needed for this car. So if you have a 190, an R129, a W124, or even a 210, hit Commonwealth up for a bolt-in bag kit. So go check out Commonwealth Chassis Works on Instagram and see all the stuff that he provides there. He's in Canada, but he ships a lot to the States. This was a super quick install. I mean, we've got like three days total into this car. Yeah, not even. Well, that's gonna do it for this episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching and for being such a huge support system for the channel this entire year of 2023. I hope you are with friends and family today as it's Christmas Eve. Have a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holidays. Can't wait to show you guys what's in store for 2024. We've got so much stuff on the burners. We gotta get back from the holidays, dive into the 64 Beetle. We got parts coming from England, from Everesto for that. The 1000 SP, we've got the motor for that now. We've got so much to do on that car if that's gonna be ready for Alpine Volksfair in May. 2024 is gonna be wild, but thank you so much for all of the support in 2023. We'll see you in the next episode and hopefully in the next year. Merry Christmas. Christmas, Merry Chrysler. <laughs>